makes an 80-year-old tick for the clock tower at the Chimsa Choi waterfront. It's several motors that keep the clocks there in step with the times. Inside Story looks at why second-hand repairs are just out of the question when it comes to a major tune-up for the old timepiece. Hong Kong's waterfront. Amid palm trees and modern architecture, an old clock tower stands tall, steeped with history. This clock was built in 1915 as part of the old railway station of Jim Uh But when the railway station moved, the government uh, wanted to keep the tower at Jim as a landmark. Back in the old days, there weren't that many um, buildings around. And in fact, this area was wide open. So really, this tower was the tallest uh, building around here. Uh, so it gives a very good sight to the people around to, 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 to check on the time. But the universal timepiece is finding itself winding down for its first major overhaul. The Electrical and Mechanical Services Department says it's spending about $20,000 for the repairs. That's more than double the original amount spent to put up the structure. The gear and the pointer are the original pieces. So as it was, as they were built in 1915, and after operation for so many years, they've been badly worn out. So really, it's about time to replace the, the mechanisms. It sounds easy enough, but getting to the top of the tower to carry out the work for the four clocks can be a feat in itself. What awaits repairman Ip Kun Wai and his assistant are six flights of stairs. The two must negotiate more than 70 steps before reaching the floor, where they're greeted by, surprisingly, small motors. A tiny fan cools each of the mechanisms. The heat inside the tower is usually a few Celsius higher than outside. On this day, the room temperature climbs to 32 Celsius. They work quickly in the heat. But what's proven to be a real test is finding parts to replace the 24 mechanical pieces. Those parts were in the past made in England. But now in England you can't find the factory. We had to basically start from scratch to see how we can make them to fix the clocks. Each clock motor is to be replaced separately. With time standing still for the work, the pointers on the clock also have to be removed. But taking off the five to six foot long pointers is no easy task. We have to find people to help because you have to stick your head out. The hand is heavy. It's around 10 pounds. Surprisingly, it's something that hasn't changed since the tower was built. In the early days, a bronze bell once sat at the tower and was chimed at the top of the hour. Back then, it only took a single motor to keep the clocks running. Those days are long gone. This clock is an old piece and you don't expect very accurate reading from it. So really, it only gives a, an indication for the time. Well, we have two staff doing the uh, monthly uh, routine maintenance by oiling it and also checking the gears. And apart from that operation, we also check the accuracy twice daily. It's like any other work. When you are done, you are pretty happy. It's expected to take about two months before all the new gears get the clocks ticking again. So for now, the public will have to settle for a perfect view of the past with your not-so-perfect look at the present. <laughs>